Hello everyone, I am Oel Kavadek and today I will be presenting our work Beyond Pixelwise Supervision. So first let's start with the motivation and what is actually Pixelwise Supervision. Um, the standard losses such as cross-entropy and dice losses treat the problem of semantic segmentation as independent pixel-wise uh, classification. And to illustrate that, let's take an input image, its corresponding ground truth, and the prediction of a well-trained neural network. Now, based on that, we can compute uh, the, its corresponding cross-entropy and dice values, and we can see that we have a pretty good dice and the network has learned how to segment the object. But now let's do an experiment and let's shuffle uh, vertically all the lines and shuffle correspondingly so they still match the lines and the ground rules and the prediction. And if, if we still compute the cross entropy and the dice values, we'll notice that they're still actually completely the same. Um, the definition of, definition of cross entropy and dice do not take into account the position of the pixels, the shape of the object or anything like that. And if we shuffle all the pixels in the image, uh, the cross entropy and dice values are still the same. But the computer uh, vision literature is filled with ways to describe and characterize object shapes and location. So let's take two of them as an example, the centroid and the average distance to the centroid. Um, so the centroid is simply the center uh, and location of the object and we can see here that the yellow and the green classes have the same centroid whereas the blue one is a bit uh, more on the top. The average distance of the, on, to the centroid uh, describes how much the object uh, spreads over each axis. So we can see that the blue, that the blue class is spread more horizontally than vertically. If we recompute those values on the shuffle lines, we'll see that the descriptor on one axis has not changed, which makes sense, but the other one becomes meaningless. And if we recompute it over the completely shuffled image, all those values become meaningless, which makes sense as the whole point. We want to describe an object, its shape, uh, location. So if we shuffle, if we move pixels around, even if there is the same number of pixel for each class, uh, obviously they will get a different value. And this is the first contribution of this paper. Uh, we reintroduce standard and classical shape descriptors uh, updated to the context of uh, deep learning based semantic segmentation. So all that we describe here is can be computed uh, from uh, network output and softmax probabilities. The second contribution is that we propose a way to supervise a neural network only using shape descriptors and higher order um, description of the, of, the, of the problem. So instead of training with 65,000 uh, individual pixel-wise labels, we train with uh, four descriptors per class and no pixel uh, information at all. The first motivation to do that was to simply scientific inquiry to see if it would work. But there is another motivation is that descriptors um, can be a way to encode anatomical prior and anatomical knowledge about the task at hand. So now let's focus a bit on how we actually compute those descriptors. Um, first, let's reintroduce general shape moments. And so shape moments have P two orders, uh, P and Q for the 2D case, and if you went to higher dimensional cases, you would have, you would add more orders. Um, it's computed on the uh, network output, S of theta, which are the softmax probabilities for a specific class. So all of everything that we present in this paper is compatible with multi-class settings. So why in Omega are all the pixels uh, in the image and X and Y are their uh, coordinates on each axis. So we can see the shape moments as uh, a sum of the weighted pixel coordinates uh, to the power of e and q. And each coordinate is weighted by, its, by the, cor by the co corresponding uh, prediction for that pixel at that class. 
And to give a real example of what we can do with it, uh, let's take the, let's compute the volume, the size of a class, which is simply the shape moment of order zero and zero, which amounts to summing the probabilities uh, for that class over the whole image. The centroid that we mentioned earlier can be computed just using different shape moments. Uh, we can see that the average of the pixel coordinates. So first we do, uh, for each axis, we do a sum of the pixel coordinates weighted by their corresponding pro probabilities that we divide by the volume of the class. Uh, something else that is quite useful is the central moments. Uh, it's related to shape moments, but instead of uh, doing the sum of the weighted pixel coordinates, we can see that all of them are shifted by their corresponding centroid. And this can be used to, to define the average distance to centroid that we showed earlier. If the centroid is seen as the average of pixel coordinates, then this is a standard deviation of pixel coordinates. So what we do is for each uh, axis, we compute the second uh, central moment that we normalize then by the volume of the class and then we take the square root of that. But there is also more to than to the descriptor than uh, shape and central moments. Uh, something really standard is the length of a prediction that it's perimeter. And to compute that, we, what we do is uh, for each pair of neighboring pixels, we take a look at their prediction. If there's the same prediction, it means that there is no boundary uh, at that spot. And we count it as zero in the overall sum. But if they have a different prediction, a different class, it means that the segmentation has a boundary at that spot. And so we add one in that sum. And by doing that over all pairs, uh, in the image, we can get the length of that prediction. Something else that we can do is uh, computing the ratio of uh, different descriptors, for instance, for different classes. Uh, so this will not be like um, an absolute value, but rather a relationship between the two. And to give a concrete example, uh, let's go back to the heart segmentation problem. And we can see that the myocardium in GUI complete in green, completely surrounds the left ventricle in yellow. What that means is that when we compute the length of the left ventricle, it has only one boundary, the inner one. Uh, but the myocardium has two of them, the inner one, shared with the left ventricle, and the outer one. That means that the ratio between the length of the myocardium and the length of the left ventricle is greater or equal to two. So this can be a great way to encode uh, anatomical uh, information that we have, even if it's not perfect, and just inequalities. So now let's focus a bit on how we can uh, supervise neural network with that, without using any pixel-wise supervision. So there are more details in the paper, but what we do amounts to a series of losses uh, that we can optimize directly with stochastic gradient descent. So for each descriptor that we want to supervise, and for each class that we want to supervise, First, we have two of f, which is the uh, ground truth descriptor, the value that we aim, and f of uh, computed with uh, the softmax probabilities as an input. Uh, we put all that into an extended log barrier. The exact details are into the paper. But what this allows us is to enforce in a smooth and progressive way, it enforces the, uh, that the descriptors on the predicted segmentation is between two bonds, and those bonds are the grand truth uh, descriptors plus minus 10%. So as experiments, we experimented on two different data sets, ACDC, the heart segmentation that we showed earlier, and PROMICE 12, which is a prostate segmentation problem. Um, so we supervise only with uh, descriptors, no pixel-wise information at all, so we use the volume information, location in the form of centroid, and overall shape uh, with the uh, average distance to centroid and the length. We compare to pixel-wise cross entropy, not to show that it's better, but just to see if it would be able to reach satisfactory results compared to the state of the art. And indeed, it's able to not only learn to segment the object, but it was 
able to learn the more complex relationship between the, those two classes. Uh, it learned that, yeah, indeed, the myocardium is surrounding the left ventricle. And even in that failure case where it predicted two classes that should not be here, it's really interesting to note that the neural network has understood uh, how the different classes relate to each other. On the prostate data set, we can see that even the, uh, the, set, the network trained with 65,000 uh, labels per, per image is still having troubles on some cases, uh, whereas when you use only four descriptors per class, it's still imperfect. It's far from a, from a really good segmentation, but it's able to locate the object and have its overall shape. And it, we find it quite impressive given the little amount of supervision that we gave to that neural network. Something else that can be do is if we generalize all the descriptors that we introduce into 2D, into 3D, and if, for instance, we have different uh, notation, different time point, then we can plot those, uh, those descriptors over time. And in the case of the cardiac cycle, we can see the heart uh, shrinking and shifting to its center. Um, so what that means is that those two values can be used uh, as lower and upper bounds for all the descriptors, not just for those two time points, but for any time point uh, in that scan. So to conclude, um, what we introduce here is not a better way to the image segmentation. Uh, Pixel-wise losses are, they work really well, otherwise we will not be here. But rather what we show is a different way to think about image segmentation, uh, trying to describe where the object should be, how it should look like, and not trying to micromanage each pixels of a neural network. Um, there are still many more descriptors than can be defined. We just scratch the surface and we reintroduce a few basic ones. But the combination of different uh, general tools can allow us to define really powerful descriptors. And this can be a way to encode anatomical prior and uh, knowledge that we have beforehand on the task at hand which could be then, um, it could be a way to to deal with the lack of annotation. Uh, if we can simply enforce directly uh, some anatomical truths during training, then we it might require less uh, manual annotation. So all the code of the project is available online. It's written in PyTorch, and there is both the code to compute the descriptors, uh, just as a metric, but there is also the code to uh, train the neural network with it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And thank you for listening.